Good afternoon. Welcome to our midweek prayer gathering on this Veterans Day, November the 11th. First day without Indian summer. The bottom dropped out. I want to share some scripture and then uh, some interesting things that I've found recently to help us in prayer. The scripture will be Psalm 78 verses 1 to 7. My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from of old, things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. So the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. I sent uh, you an email late this morning, encouraging you again to subscribe to the Nazarene Missions International Prayer Mobilization Line, which comes by email every Wednesday morning. and. Uh, very informative information, and especially today's, I felt like, uh, were worthy of our consideration. And uh, I want to start there uh, at the beginning of our prayer time. There are certain areas around the world where the church has needed to minister in secret, incognito, and we've called those creative access areas. And uh, we have missionaries there and laypersons who minister in very different ways to help get the church established in those areas. Now we call them additional areas. And we have work as the Church of the Nazarene in these areas. Since 1994, there are 133 organized churches 108 not yet organized Nazarene churches, and 15,662 church members. These additional areas are located on several of the international regions where the Church of the Nazarene has works. These areas tend to be resistant to the gospel, which means that the op open proclamation can be restricted requiring creative approaches for ministry and missions. They also may be where the church has been officially registered with the government, but whose political, social, or religious environment may not always be conducive to Christian outreach and church development. So the entire emphasis for this week's prayer mobilization line are these areas, these additional areas, creative access areas. And I would encourage you to look at these. It will stir your heart and uh, put a burden on you, hopefully, that uh, the Lord will assist those servants of the church and of the Lord in their areas of ministry. Here are some praises from that list. Give thanks that there have been no martyrs for their faith in our area for the past three years. Praise God that the underground church has been growing in the most gospel-resistant areas. That's terrific. Give thanks that in our many local house churches, Nazarenes have been actively involved in assisting their neighbors during the COVID-19 pandemic. And we give thanks for pastors, ministry leaders, and believers who are standing in the gap. They need encouragement and an understanding of the times we are living in. Often they are totally alone, but without complaint, they are obeying their calls. And then a number of prayer requests is on the line as well. I want to encourage us this morning during this time of prayer. And I lost what I was going to share, but I'll find it very quickly. And here it is. Did you know that prayer is faster than the fastest plane? You don't need to board a plane or train or take a car or ship to get your prayers to their destination. Of course, God is the one to whom we pray, but by his Holy Spirit, he brings your prayer, however simple or comprehensive,
to bear upon the situation for which you pray, or to bring hope, comfort, and encouragement to the one for whom you pray. Just pray. Did you know that anyone can pray at any place, at any time? It need not be rehearsed or written, though there's nothing wrong with writing a prayer. You do not need to be in any particular physical position, but your spiritual posture needs to be right. Be humble, obedient, faithful, and sincere. Prayer is a bridge between ourselves and God, and between ourselves and others. Some we know, some we won't, and helps us and others to know that we are not alone in any situation or set of circumstances. Three great reminders today about prayer. Well, this afternoon, we want to bring our list of unsaved, unchurched family and friends to the Lord's attention and uh, reminders to us again of the importance of intercessory prayer. So here's our list. Natalie, Zane, Denise, Becky, Ed, Joanne, Michelle, Chad, Terry, Aaron, Elizabeth, Brittany, Mark, Paul, Jenna, Abby, Betty, Elise, Amy, Lonnie, Morgan, the Wathans, the Azitas, Kaylee, Sandy, Don, Tricia, Riley, Lynn, Candy, Terry, Cindy, Ben, Jessica, Maggie, Tracy, Paul and family, Patty, Destiny, Carl, Bill, Walter, Jody, Stan, Doug, Shelley, Barry, Joey, Debbie, Kirk, Julie, Amber, Ryan, Scott, Jim, Karen, April, Jill, Mike, Stacy, Andy, Alec, Dawn, Ron, Trich, Daniel, Dustin, Paige, Crystal, JD, Rich, Jared, Matt, Sam, Elizabeth, Janet, Ellen, Pam, Kathy, Lori, Peggy, Tim, Randy, Jamie, John, Jesse, Chantel, Keithra, Kathoro, Taisha, Kelly, Lauren, Melissa, Victoria, Josh, Tony, Teresa, Dakota, Jennifer, Dominic, Brian, Roxy, TJ and family, Denara, Judy, Kevin, Keith, Rock, Jeff, Hunter, Audrey, Connor, Jeremy, Jeremy, Fabio, and Bob. We're continuing to pray for the United States of America for spiritual awakening and revival during this time of confusion and political unrest, asking the Lord to respond to his promise, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. We're praying for the peace of Jerusalem this afternoon, praying for the Belen, Guatemala City, Church of the Nazarene, Pastor Neri and his congregation, for the persecuted church around the world in more than 50 nations, Pastor Alon Santos, the House of Good News Church of the Nazarene in Campinas, Brazil, South America, particularly their Compassionate Ministries outreach to their community, the COVID-19 pandemic, and all related to that. Let's pray for the safety of our children, of our elderly, of our schools, businesses, church. Let's lift these needs before the Lord this afternoon. Father, we thank you today for the reminder that uh, prayer is just a breath away, that when we have needs, you have invited us to come, and we're grateful, Lord, for that invitation, and we do come to you today, and we want to come boldly to the throne of grace this afternoon. We pray, Lord, for the names 
and spiritual needs of these who we love and care for very much, spouses, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nieces, nephews, co-workers, neighbors, friends. You know each one. You know where they are at this very moment, Lord, and we're asking your spirit to go to those places and those hearts and speak to those who need you today. We're praying, Lord, also for the United States for this time of unrest, especially politically and socially and racially, so many, many ways, Lord. We ask for your healing, your forgiveness, your restoration of this land. Uh, help us, Lord, to turn our attention back to you and not our own selfish concerns or ideas or desires, but help us, Lord, to really focus on you. We pray for our friends in Guatemala City this afternoon, Pastor Neri and his congregation. We pray for Pastor Alan in uh, Campinas and that uh, growing church of the Nazarene. We pray, Lord, for the persecuted church around the world this afternoon, our sisters and brothers that are being tortured and tormented and even killed for their allegiance and loyalty to Jesus. We pray for strength and courage and faith and uh, a powerful testimony for all of our sisters and brothers. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for that city and that nation of Israel, for her friends, for her enemies. We pray for the unrest that goes on so often in that part of the world today. We pray for the COVID-19 pandemic. Pray for those that uh, have tested positive. Pray for those that are suffering symptoms of the disease. We pray for our schools, our businesses, our churches, our communities. We need you, Lord. We need you to be our great physician even today. We thank you for the reminder that in difficult places of service, you are building your church, and what good news that is this afternoon. As we commit this Veterans Day to you, Lord, we thank you for those who have served our nation in times of war and in times of peace, and we pray that you will bless our veterans and our servicemen today wherever they are serving. Lord, we commit this new day to your care and will. Have your way with us, we pray, Lord, in your name. Amen. I want to remind you of our youth Bible study tonight at 730. We're studying Christianity 101. Jesus will be our theme tonight. And the Facebook Live Portage Grace Youth page will have the Zoom download link for you. Also, Sunday, we'll be preaching from Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. And I'd love for you to read ahead and uh, be prayerfully considering what the Lord might say to you during the Sunday morning service. Thanks for watching and listening and praying with us today. May you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening, and God bless. Bye-bye. Bring my blank.